Hi, my name is Alex Anders, and you've been sent this video because someone who trusts you wanted you to know that they are bisexual. Sometimes it can be hard coming out as bisexual. There are a lot of misconceptions out there. And sometimes the person you're coming out to, well, they'll ask questions that the person who's coming out doesn't know the answer to. So the purpose of this video is to help you better understand what bisexuality is so that when you talk to the person who sent you the video, you'll be on a more firm standing and have a better idea of what you're talking about when you talk to the person next. So first, I'm gonna encourage you to let go of a lot of the ideas you have on bisexuality now because right now, bisexuality is still somewhat being defined by the outliers, meaning the people who have the hardest time conforming to society's norms, those are the ones who, let's say in the 70s and 80s and 90s, those are the ones most likely to identify as bisexual, but unfortunately, they don't represent the majority of bisexuals. So there's been a redefining of what bisexuality is and allow me to give you the definition of what the bisexual community now defines bisexuality is. Bisexuality is defined as the capacity for someone to have romantic or sexual attractions to more than one gender, not necessarily in the same amount and not necessarily at the same time. So let's break that down a little bit. So I said that bisexuality is the capacity to have this attraction. And the reason why I said that is because it has to do with the way your brain is wired. So the reason why we repeat anything that we enjoy is because when we do it, there are neurons in our brains and you know we do it and a neuron releases a chemical called dopamine in our brain. And because it you know feels good, we repeat what it is that we've done. And that works with attraction as well, with heterosexuals and homosexuals. When they see someone they find attractive or appealing, uh, the chemical dopamine is released in their brain and then they repeat the process. So a bisexual is someone who can have that dopamine release when they see someone of the same gender and someone of the opposite gender, which means their brain is simply wired to have this ability. So over time, they can have you know, less of attraction at one point and more of attraction at another point. But because their brain is wired such, it means that at any point the attractions can come back and they're just capable of having multiple attractions. Now that doesn't mean that they have to act on every attraction they have. It simply means that over time, um, this is what's gonna happen or this is what might happen. And it's brain wiring, and there's no science, scientific study that I've seen which has said that it's possible to completely rewire your brain. So there's like conversion therapy and things like that. There's no evidence that that works. Uh, there's no evidence that scientists have been successfully able to rewire one's brain one way or the other. So you can try and convince a bisexual that you know they shouldn't have the feelings they do. You can try and um, talk them out of being bisexual. You can try a lot of things, but the best you can possibly do is to get them to stop admitting that they were bisexual or get them to stop admitting that they have certain attractions. And this brain wiring isn't something that just happens at puberty. Usually brain wiring happens in the first couple years of life, if not in the womb. So you know, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, and no matter what they do, the bisexual does, wiring is still wiring, and they forever will have the capacity to have attractions to multiple genders. So that's what that part means. The other part is that not necessarily in the same amount. That is because bisexuality is complex and there are different types of bisexuals. There are bisexuals who have romantic and sexual attractions to people of more than one gender. And they have equally, they're equally attracted to let's say guys and they're equally attracted to girls. But that's not the only type of bisexual there is. There are bisexuals who are romantically attracted to one gender while being ex uh, exclusively sexually attracted to the other gender. There are people who have 
uh, romantic attractions to one gender and both sexual and romantic attractions to another gender or sexual attractions and romantic and sexual attractions to the other gender. It's, it's very complex. Sexuality in general is very complex, but bisexuality is even more complex than heterosexuality and homosexualities. And because of this complexity, a lot of misconceptions come up. And also because of the whole outlier thing. For one, people think that gender expression has something to do with one's sexual orientation. So gender expression is how much femininity or masculinity a person is expressing. So if you meet a person, a guy, and they seem feminine, then their gender expression is not in, completely in line with what the norms of society is for that gender. And there are a lot of people who believe that gender expression is somehow tied to their sexual orientation. And where it might seem like that for heterosexuals or for homosexuals, it's really, really not that way with bisexuality. So bisexuals, there's probably a small percentage of bisexuals who don't really conform with their, you know, gender norms. But the majority of bisexuals do conform. In fact, that's one of the reasons why bisexuals tend not to come out because they have to fight against those, those ideas. Um, and who wants to be labeled as something that they're not? But even though there are not a lot of bisexuals that come out right now, there are actually a ton of bisexuals that exist in this world. So there have been a lot of studies, specifically in the United States, that, that ask people about their sexual orientation, their sexual behavior. The CDC conducted a study, which they reported on in 2016, asking people about their sexual orientation, about their sexual behavior. And what they found was that bisexual men equal 2% of the human population, at least in America. But I think it's easy to say that since it's wiring and it's not culturally based, that these same numbers can be thought of for England, for Canada, for Australia, for New Zealand, for Germany, for you know, Russia, China, and the Middle East. It doesn't matter because, again, it's not cultural. It's about brain wiring. So uh, the studies show that 2% of all men in the United States identify and there's identification of bisexuality and then there's expression of it like you know having sexual or romantic feelings for someone of another gender but just not identifying it so that's two separate things but right now we're talking about people who identify as bisexual so the studies show that there are two percent of all men in the united states identifies bisexual and to give that kind of a a relative term about 2% of the human population is redheaded. So every time you see a redheaded male, you can think, oh, well, that person represents a bisexual male. In terms of women, the study said that 5.5% of all women in the United States identify as bisexual. That's a big, big number. In fact, if you live in the United States, you couldn't say that every time you see an Asian woman, and because Asians represent 5.6% of the population in the United States, anyone, anytime you see a woman who is Indian, Chinese, Japanese, South Pacific, any sort of Asian, that person represents a bisexual woman. And if you live in the United States, you know that there are a lot of Asians around, and that just shows you there are a lot of bisexuals around. But like I said, there are two types of bisexuals, at least identification-wise. There are the people who, I, who use the term bisexual, and then there are people who use a term that's not straight, but not specifically bisexual. They're still bisexual. They're what's called being on the bisexual spectrum. So if you look at all the people who are on the bisexual spectrum, that equates to approximately 14% of the American population. And this is a government study that was run, so that number isn't made up. That's a real number. 14% of the population. That means that every time you go in a room with 14, with 100 people in it, 14 of those people are somewhere on the bisexual spectrum. And if you want to look at it in terms of population, like relatively speaking, you know, what is that like? 
In the United States, there are 14% of the population is African American. And you know how many black people you see walking down the street or on television, a lot of stuff. So you can look at black people, African Americans, and you can say that every time you see an African American in the United States, they represent someone on the bisexual spectrum. And it's not just like, you know, these raw numbers. If you want to think about people that you might actually know who are bisexual, we can use celebrities. So historically speaking, we could say, well, Julius Caesar was known to be bisexual or Alexander the Great was famously bisexual or, or, or Aristotle or Malcolm X. And if you wanted someone who is alive and living today, uh, I could point to Angelina Jolie. She was one of the largest or most highest grossing actresses for a long time. And she was openly bisexual and had been for a very long time. For men, it's a little more difficult, but I can say, I'm sure you know who Marlon Brando is um, or James Dean. They are also bisexual in terms of singers or people like the lead singer of Queen or David Bowie. Um, in fact, Whitney Houston, who passed recently, has had a couple of documentaries created about her recently. And in all of them, the people who knew her best said that Whitney Houston was bisexual. In fact, Whitney Houston's ex-husband, Bobby Brown, said that he believes that if people had accepted her bisexuality, Whitney Houston would still be alive today. That's really tragic if you think about it. Think about the idea that it was her bisexuality that had led to her death. And it's hard to say because he wasn't very specific, but I think it's clear that the person who he was talking about when he said more people were accepting was actually Whitney Houston's mother. Because Whitney Houston's mother, to the last thing I've seen about her, has, is clearly someone who does not accept anyone other than straight people. So it's really sad to think that Whitney Houston, who was easily one of the biggest singers in the entire world and to this day still has one of the biggest hits ever, was crippled by the fact that she was bisexual and she couldn't gain acceptance from the person who care, she cared most for and who really should have cared most for her. But honestly, it doesn't really surprise me so much that Whitney Houston's life ended this way if she was bisexual because there have been other, been other studies conducted by the CDC and they looked at bisexual teenagers. And unfortunately, it's been shown that bisexual teenagers are more likely to over drink, overeat, uh, to smoke, to not exercise, to engage in risky behavior, um, to engage in sex earlier, more likely to be sexually abused, and more likely to think about and attempt suicide. So to think that Whitney Houston was bisexual and she died from too many drugs in what could have been considered an overdose, it seems to fit the pattern. And you have to ask, why is it that bisexuals are more likely to suffer from these afflictions? And I will tell you, it has nothing to do with biology, not this one. As a bisexual, I can tell you that there's a lot of pressure on a person when they're bisexual. It's not clear cut. It's not like, oh, I clearly like this gender, so I just need to overcome society in order to, you know, be with the gender that I like. It's much more complex than that. It has to do with, uh, first of all, there are a lot of bisexuals who think, well, if I'm attracted to both genders, then I could just focus on this one gender over here and ignore the attraction I have over here. But it's kind of like being on a diet. You know, if you've ever been on a diet and you say, well, I will not eat sweets. Maybe the first day you can do it, it's fine. Maybe the second day, maybe a week, maybe a month. But it always sits in the back of your mind and you keep thinking, oh man, that chocolate cake. Oh man, my favorite food. Oh, that pizza. And it's you constantly trying to fight your inner urges to not do that. That's kind of what it is for a bisexual when they say, I'm going to ignore an entire other half of who I am. And it weighs on you. 
You start thinking about it all the time. Um, you get dark, depressing thoughts about it. You start wondering whether or not people would love you or accept you because you're bisexual. For example, if you're a guy, you could date a girl who you really like and you could try and ignore the fact that you also have an attraction to other guys and it'll just sit there and you'll start thinking, wow, you know, if I ever told this girl who I love that I also am attracted to the other guys, not like I want to do anything with it, but I'm just, I have that attraction. Will she leave me? Or if I were to tell my parents that I'm bisexual, will they disown me? Will they look down on me? A big thing for bisexuals is wondering whether or not if you tell someone you're bisexual, whether or not they will look down on you afterwards. And it just wears on you. And the, the older you get, the more you hold in the secret, the, the more bad habits you pick up because it's just, it just becomes tiring. And it's no wonder that people look for an escape when they have all these thoughts. So drinking, drugs, unfortunately, thinking about attempting suicide are ways that bisexual try and escape the heaviness that comes with being bisexual. So the question now becomes, now that you know all this, how do you respond to the person who sent you this video? There is one way that is that the best way to respond to the person who, who is telling you that they're bisexual. First of all, they trusted you in this. They trusted you that they could give you this information and you won't use it to hurt them. So the first thing you can say is, thank you for sharing this with me. That means a lot. That will mean a lot to the person you're saying it to. And hopefully the fact that they actually did trust you means a lot to you. So after you say that, the thing that most bisexuals most want to hear is that you will continue to love them no matter what. Whether it's, you know, whether it's a parent relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship. If you say, you know, it doesn't matter to me that you're bisexual, I will love you no matter what. Or um, that you're my brother no matter what, my sister no matter what, um, that I care for you no matter what, or that this doesn't make a difference with our friendship. Anything along the lines that shows that you accept them and will continue to accept them in spite of their sexual orientation, in spite, of the, in spite of this new information you've gained about them, will just be the most brilliant thing that you could possibly say. And I'm not discounting the fact that you might disagree with their bisexuality. Like you, you might believe that they can change, which they can't, or you might believe that they shouldn't express their bise bisexuality anyway. It might embarrass you or something along those lines. And that's, you're human, you have those feelings. But try and take the other person's perspective here. They're becoming very vulnerable in sharing this information with you. And it's hard for them. Get this moment right. Let them know that, that you are grateful for them sharing this and that you will care for them, love, love them no matter what. Get that out there. And if you have questions, it's okay for you to express the fact that you have questions, but I also ask you to kind of give them a moment because again, they've made their self, their self really vulnerable by sharing this with you. And they're probably having to go, this pro go through this process with a lot of people. So imagine what life is like in their shoes where every time they come out, the person they come out to has a bunch of questions for them. I can tell you from experience, it wears a person down. So if you can resist, say if you, you know, if you have questions, you really want to know the answers to those questions, you can say, well, when you feel comfortable, I would love to ask you some questions. Or when you feel comfortable, I'd love to talk about this further. And they might say, you can ask whatever you want now and that'd be great. But give them the option to have some space or even better, uh, you could say to them, if you would like to talk about this, I'm always here to talk. Those would be the most wonderful things that you could say to the person who sent you this video. They will appreciate it greatly. And more than that, in a few years, you're going to look back at you having said those things and feel very proud of yourself for having handled this moment so spectacularly. And yes, you could have questions like, 
you know, have you, have you, you know, been in a relationship yet with someone of the, let's say, same gender? You might wonder about that, or you might wonder, so what is your attraction between men and women, like 50-50 or 60-40? These are all legitimate questions, and really there's, not, there's nothing wrong with you asking these questions. It's all just about timing. So give them the time, give them the space to be able to come to grips with the whole idea and allow them to be able to figure out what their life now means that they are bisexual and give them the confidence to know that their entire life is not going to fall apart just because they're bisexual. So I hope that was helpful. Just a reminder, the person you sent it to, the best thing you could possibly say is thank you for sharing this with me and I will love you no matter what. If you do have questions, I can tell you that I have a YouTube channel and I talk exclusively about bisexuality. So some of the topics I've talked about is, you know, how does religion fit into bisexuality? You know, does God still love you if, if you're bisexual? I talk about the pop culture aspect of what celebrities have come out recently or what television shows have bisexual characters on it. I talk about everything having to do with bisexual, bisexuality. And if you have any questions about bisexuality, you can post them in a the comment section on any of my videos. And also in all of my videos in the description section, I always put my email address. So if you have any questions that you don't want to put publicly, you can always email me and I will do my best to get back to you and answer you uh, whatever questions you have. So I hope that was helpful. And to all of my bisexual friends watching, stay cooler, my bisexual friend. Stay cooler. Bye.